All right, Underground, we are back again for like our 500th week of coronavirus shutdown uh, 2020. And um, so we are coming again from the Underground room uh, to your living room, bringing you guys uh, the greatest content you could ever imagine for your um, Sunday school listening pleasure. Um, so uh, I'm Pastor Mike, and it's good to be back with you guys again. One of the things that um, I want to just say, if you were able to join us on this Zoom call that we had last Saturday, then you know it was a ton of fun. Um, if you didn't miss us, we are going to do another one in the next couple weeks, so make sure you tune in for that. Pay attention, because we gave away like $200 in coffee bar gift cards that we can use once the coffee bar opens back up again, and we played a lot of fun games, and it was just a good time to see each other and hang out. So if you missed that, Make sure you guys pay attention to what's going to come up next. We'll give you guys some notice and what's going on. But here we are, week two of our new series, Stories. And we're just going through some of the biggest, most important, most exciting, most interesting stories from the Bible and just making them, you know, what can we learn from them? What do they have to say to us today in our lives? And today I want to look at probably one of the most famous stories in the entire Bible. It's the story of David and Goliath. And I think probably almost all of you guys are familiar with it, um, but it has worked its way into like just the common conversations. If you watch sports, you hear all the time about a David and Goliath story. It's when the little guy beats the big guy, when the underdog um, wins the championship. And so this is a story that has just resonated with so many people for really millennia, for thousands of years. People have read this story and been inspired by David. So let's just take a look at it. If you've got your Bibles, open them to 1 Samuel chapter 17. That entire chapter, um, I think it's 51 verses, the entire thing just kind of lays out the story of David and Goliath. And it is a really remarkable story. I want to key in on some details that I think will help us understand the story better and help it make more sense to us and maybe some things that we can take out of it and learn from it too. You know the story. David is a, a shepherd boy. He's the youngest of eight brothers, I think. And, um, and he is the only one who's not in the military. All of his brothers are soldiers and they are at war because at this point, the, the, the nation of Israel is at war against the nation of the Philistines. And so they are, um, there's a big valley and they're camped out against each other. And one day, David's dad, Jesse, says, I want you to go check on your brothers. I want you to give them some, uh, you know, take them this care package. And so um, David runs to the, the battle where it's at. He goes to the encampment. He sees his brothers. And right when he gets there, this thing happens. This thing that happens that has been happening for the last month every single day. The Philistines had a secret weapon, okay? They had the secret weapon, okay? They had this guy named Goliath. And if you know anything about the Bible, Goliath, the Bible says, was a man of war since boyhood, okay? So when he was a little kid, he was a man of war. He was beating up um, uh, grown men. This guy was a giant. The Bible, some, by some estimations, they think that he might have been almost nine feet tall. Okay, that is, that is two feet taller than Shaquille O'Neal and just would be dunking on Shaquille O'Neal. Okay, so this guy is a giant monster. His weapons are huge. His sword, his javelin, his, his, uh, his shield. Other, pe- other soldiers can't even carry them and he just like throws them against things. So what happens is every day, this giant man comes out to the middle of the field And he calls the Israelites and he says, send out your best soldier, okay? And he and I will fight and we'll meet in battle. And look, we don't have to have these two wars uh, where where all these armies fight against each other. We'll just do one-on-one, mano-a-mano, okay? And if I win, then you guys have to say the Philistines um, are better and you guys have to be our servants. But if you win, if you beat me, you guys can be my servant. Um, You guys guys will be the Philistine servants. And every day the same thing happened. When he would come out in the middle of the the Israelite army, because this man was so ferocious, he was such a huge monster, he was so scary that they would run away in fear. There was not one man in all of Israel who was willing to go out and fight the giant. Now, you know the story. The reason we call it the David and Goliath story is because David said, I'll do it, right? He gets to the front lines. He sees him and says, I'll fight that man. So uh, David goes out and he meets him in battle. And you guys know the story that David picks up a, a, a smooth stone. He actually had five smooth stones. Takes one of the smooth stones, put it, puts it in his sling, swings it around, throws it. It hits Goliath smack dead in the forehead, knocking him out. David goes up. He takes his sword, takes Goliath's swords, cuts his own head off. And that day, Israel got one of the greatest victories. And the whole world, really in the history of the whole world, um, David was able to win that victory. Okay, I want to look at what... What was it about David, right? This, this small, young shepherd boy 
He was able to become such a ferocious warrior. He was able to, to have such a great victory and make such a great accomplishment. Because look, here's what's, you might not ever have to meet anyone in battle. In fact, I really pray you don't have to, okay? War is a hideous thing. It's a terrible thing. Death is a terrible thing. But um, you are definitely 100% in your life going to face things that are huge, okay? You're gonna face huge struggles. Um, every single person in this life, nobody gets out scot-free. You are going to encounter things in your life that you do not feel prepared for. Things that are scary, things that are dangerous, things that are gonna be hard, things that are bigger than you. What do you do in that moment? How do you respond in the moment when, when you are faced with something really big, something really scary, something really hard? Okay, well, that was David's situation. I wanna just look at three things. Here's three things that David did or that David had that helped him in that situation. The first thing it says, I have here is that David stood with God. So if you're taking notes, the first point I want you to write down is David stood with God, okay? I wanna read this to you guys real quick. Early in the morning, this is verse 20. Early in the morning, David left the flock in the care of a shepherd, loaded up and set out as Jesse, his dad, had directed. He reached the camp as the army was going out to its battle positions, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines, facing each other like they're going to go to battle. David left his things with the keeper of the supplies, ran to the battle lines, and asked his brothers how they were. As he was talking to them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. Whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him in great fear. Listen, the first thing to, to point out here is that David was the wrong man for the job. Okay, there was, he, he, in fact, of all the people who were at the battle that day, David was the last guy who should have fought Goliath, right? David wasn't even a soldier. He wasn't even in the military. He's surrounded by all these soldiers. It's their job to fight. It's their job to, to defend. But when this guy comes out, he's so terrifying that everybody runs away, except David didn't run away. David listened to him and he thought, somebody needs to shut him up. Because not only was Goliath mocking them, but Goliath was mocking their God. Goliath was saying all kinds of terrible, blasphemous things against the one true living God. And David knew that God takes that very serious. And David thought, here we are, God's people, God's representatives. And this man is blasting it. I'm not running away from that. In fact, I'm standing with God. Somebody needs to shut this guy up. You know, um, in this situation, you're gonna be faced with a lot of situations where maybe somebody else should do something. Maybe there's somebody better for the job. Maybe there's somebody else that it makes more sense for them to, to fight this battle. Maybe they don't. In fact, what if, what if nobody does? What if everybody else does the wrong thing? What are you gonna do? That's the question every single one of us needs to face in our lives is what are we gonna do? When faced with those choices, when faced with, with standing with God or standing with everybody else, where are you going to stand? Because in David's mind, it was clear. I'm standing with God. I am going to stand with whatever is right. I don't care what everybody else does. I don't care what the crowd says. I don't care what everybody else does. I'm going to stand with God. And that day, the reason that David got that great victory is because David stood with God rather than with everybody else. So the second thing, though, that is the way you find out about David is that David had experience, okay? David had some experiences that helped him in this situation. This is really important. So David, he says, uh, I'm going to fight this guy. And so they bring him to King Saul, okay? And his brother's trying to shut him up. They Get out of here. You're ruining our reputation. You're making us look bad. You're just a little kid. Get out of here. He says, no, no, I'm willing to fight him. And so it comes back to the king, and so the king sends for him. And so David goes before the king, and the king says, you're just a boy. You, this guy is going to slaughter you. This is a terrible idea. And listen to what David says, verse 34. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it. I struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. And when it turned on me, I seized it by the hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. The uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistines. Now, the reason that David was so courageous in this situation is because this is not the first scary thing that he'd encountered. In fact, he had been in some really dangerous situations before. He had been out watching the, the sheep when either a lion or a bear came and, and took one of the sheep. You know, most of us in that situation would say, bye sheep, right? Because 
They, at the point where a, a mountain lion gets it or a bear gets it is like the point where it's like, all right, enjoy the sheep. Not David. David took his job of shepherding those sheep so seriously, he ran after the lion and the bear and he got the sheep back. Now, if you know anything about wild animals, they do not like it when you mess with their food, right? And so this lion and bear turned on David to attack David. They thought, okay, I'll have two snacks, I guess. And so they turned on David and says that David grabbed them by the hair of their face and beat them to death, okay? Now, here's what I want. Here's, here's a really, really, really important situation I want you to understand. If this was you, or if it was me, I'll tell you what I would do. I would go back to the town, and I would carry that lion carcass with me, and I'd be like, I whoop this thing. I would tell everybody who would listen to me. I would go house to house, door to door in my neighborhood, all of my relatives, all of my friends, anybody who would listen to me, and I would show off my giant, you know how people do this? Hunters do this all the time, right? They have the, the big trophies of, of the deer heads or the, the whatever, you know, in their houses, right? They stuff them because they want to remember, I conquered this thing, right? And that's what I would do, okay? Probably, I, I hope not. I hope I learned from David's lesson. But I would want everybody to know how tough I was, how awesome I was, how incredible I was. That's not the lesson David took away. David went back to camp, right, with his, with his wounded lamb with him, and he, he just started to reflect, oh my gosh, God, you took care of me there. You gave me the strength to fight off this bear. God, you, when, when I was fighting that lion, Lord, you were there. You protected me. You gave me the strength. The lesson that David learned that we should learn is that in those battles, God was the one who got the victory. David understood this. He, he understood that it was God that was helping him, right? Right? And this is going to come up later, but, but here's, my, here's, here's the main takeaway from this point, is that David had experience of God coming through for him. And how did he get that experience? I want to tell you, this is, this is so important, and this is so important for you as you're sitting there watching this to understand this. David got that experience doing one of the most boring jobs on the planet, okay? The job of the shepherd is to sit around all day long and hang out with sheep. That's it. Okay, sheep are by all estimations a very boring animal. They're not even an interesting, exciting animal. So David would just sit there all day long just with these sheep. You know the, the story of the boy who cried wolf, right? He's a shepherd, same situation. He just called wolf because he was bored because it's a really boring job. And a lot of people think, I'm just sitting here doing nothing. This is not a great adventure. This is not an exciting time. There's no great victories to be had. And so we kind of waste a lot of time not learning some very simple things we need to learn. Listen, don't waste the grind, okay? Your life might, right now might just be a little bit of a grind. It might be just doing homework every day or working around the house or doing what your parents want you to do. And it might feel like this is not that exciting. This is not a great victory. I'm not accomplishing anything great. And I want to tell you something. There, you are gaining, if you, you have the opportunity right now in your life to gain experience that will help you later on in life to defeat the giants that come into your life. David didn't waste his shepherding. Okay, David learned something. If David had not fought the lion and the bear, then David never would have fought Goliath. But because he had been faithful in smaller things, God made him faithful in bigger things, right? That's how it works. You first have to be faithful with the small things that are in your life, and then you have the opportunity to be more faithful with the big things. A lot of us, we just think, I just want to do the big thing. I want to do the exciting thing. I want to get up on, on, on in front of everybody and preach a big sermon, or I want to you know, pray for somebody to be healed of you know, like some some cancer or something, some big disease, or I want to, I want to, you know, be used by God in some powerful way. But you know what? It starts with being faithful in just the little small things. God using you just starts with being faithful in the small things in your life. And so David had experience with trusting God. And the third and final thing is this, is David acted with faith, right? That's one of the things that's so remarkable here is David acted with faith. Faith in what? Well, faith in God. Let's read it. 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 51. What happens is Goliath comes out and he laughs at David. They send out this little kid and he goes, what are you coming at me with sticks and little boys? I'm gonna kill this guy. And he just starts talking all this trash to him. Then David talks trash to, back to Goliath. But look at the, look at the content of David's trash. It starts in, trash talk. It starts in verse 45. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with a sword and spear and a javelin. <laughs> I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. 
All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or by spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands. What was David boasting in? David's confidence and boast was in God. God is gonna do this. God is about to do something supernatural. God is about to do something miraculous. As the Philistines moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him, reaching into his bat and taking out a stone. He slung it and struck the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword and drew it from the sheath. He killed him. He cut off his head with the sword. And there it is, an amazing victory. A miraculous victory, a supernatural victory, one that is talked about still today. And it happened because he trusted God. Look at, I want you to just think about this. People tell you, you know, people tell you all the time, you need to believe in yourself. You need to have, you need, you need to believe in, in who you are, believe in yourself. This is not what David did. David did not believe in himself. David did not believe in his own strength. He didn't believe in his own speed. He didn't believe in his own, you know, size. He didn't, he didn't put confidence in any of those things. His confidence was in God. And I want to tell you something. It's not true. You don't need to believe in yourself. In fact, that's a really bad place to put your confidence. If your confidence is in your own abilities, your own smartness, your own ability to talk, your own ability to do things, to, to, do, to accomplish things, if that's where your trust is, if that's where your hope is, it's going to fail, okay? I promise you, it is going to fail. But there is a God who you can put all of your trust in who will never fail, who you can have confidence is going to deliver you. And that's what David did, and God delivered him in a powerful way. So look, there's three takeaways. Here's our, here's our three points again. Is David stood with God. David had experience with trusting God. And David acted in faith. And so I just want to turn that around on you, and I want to ask you those questions. Do you stand with God? When everybody else is going, making their choices, and many of them making choices to going away from God, the peer pressure's on. When people are looking at you, are you going to stand with God or not? As all your friends maybe move away from the Lord or do something, are you going to take your stand with them or are you going to take your stand with God? If you take your stand with God, you won't be disappointed. Second thing is David had experience, but I want to know, what are you experiencing right now? Right now, just at your house in this season of your life, maybe for the last year, your sixth grade year, your seventh grade year, your eighth grade year, have you been learning, have you been gaining faith by, by overcoming in small victories? Have you been being faithful with the little things that God's put in front of you? God's commanded you to honor your mom and dad. How have you been doing with that? God's commanded you not to lie. Have you been telling the truth? Have you been honest? You've been righteous? God's commanded you to be pure. How are things, when you look on the internet or when you're on the, the um, um, you know, just watching TV, are you watching things that honor God or not? Are you being faithful to those small things? Because those small things turn into really big things later on. And so I just want to ask you the question, are you gaining that experience right now in your life? Because you can do that. And the final thing is this, are you acting in faith? Are you putting your trust in God? Are you saying, God, I I am going to make this choice. I'm going to obey you. I'm going to do this because I want to be faithful to you. You know, as you do those three things, I just want to tell you, when you come up against hard things in your life, God is going to strengthen you to overcome and you will live a life full of great victories, overcoming victories, because God has made his people to triumph, to overcome. Let me pray God's blessing over you. Father, I pray God for every student in the junior high ministry, Lord. I pray God that you would uh, fill them right now, Lord, with, this, with a David-like spirit, Lord, a David-like um, character, Lord, to trust in you, to look to you, God, to worship you. And Father, I pray, God, as we do that, Lord, that you would give us great victories, Lord. I pray, God, that we would live a life full, Lord, of, of victories, Lord, where we're overcoming the things in our life that are, that are Goliaths, Lord, that are these big things, that are these hard things, that are scary things, Lord, that you would grant us the favor and the strength and the faith, Lord, to, to overcome, to triumph. Lord, we love you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys.